Triple chrome plating or decorative chrome consists of several layers of different metals electroplated onto a base metal to provide corrosion resistant and a highly polished decorative finish. In this training video we're going to show you how to set up the plating tanks and provide and control the power required to do the plating. We're going to use short lengths of half inch diameter copper pipe as our examples because this is something readily available that you can practice with over and over. Your most important reference point is the manual. Used in conjunction with this video, it should give you all the information you need to learn the techniques quickly. Remember, plating is more art than science, so before you get to plating real parts, make sure you can produce good results on these pipes. This also helps us give you good technical support. So, pull up an armchair and enjoy the movie. Our preferred method of shipping is with UPS. We are licensed to ship hazardous materials and our staff are regularly trained in the Department of Transportation regulations regarding these materials. Packages marked with these labels are only shipped UPS ground service. When you spot these labels, you should take extra care when opening and using these products. Hazardous materials are packaged separately from the rest of your order and arrive usually a few days later. As soon as your complete kit arrives, sort out the components into their respective tanks. Use the manual for reference. Check for any damage and report it to UPS. There are two copper kits, flash copper and acid copper. Make sure you don't mix these two kits together. You'll need to make a bench. Using 2x4s and plywood is very effective. Remember that there is going to be at least 300 pounds on the bench, so make it sturdy. It's a good idea to coat the wood in epoxy paint. Cut the holes in the bench so the tank lip sits on the bench top. Bus bars are a convenient way of getting power to all your tanks without tons of wiring. Use half inch diameter copper tubing. Place the bars on wooden blocks to raise them from the wall. Mark the top bar with a plus sign and the bottom bar with a negative sign. This is a complete tank setup using the flash copper tank as an example. There is a small red light on the heater to show when the thermostat has switched on. You may wish to install a thermometer. There's the filter pump, anode connected to the other anode, the tank bar connected to the negative bus bar, and finally the anodes are connected to the positive bus bar. You can prepare all your anodes and GP plates in the following manner. Cut a strip down the long side of the anodes. In the chrome anode shown here, the strip is about three quarters of an inch wide. Because all the other anodes use less current and are smaller, the strip may only be a quarter of an inch wide. Don't sever the strip from the anode as this is what serves as the electrical connection to the power supply. It also ensures that no foreign metals such as copper from copper wire or steel alligator clips enter the solution. Any metal other than the anode will dissolve because it is sacrificed like the anode and it will probably ruin your solution. The strips are placed at the front of the tank here for demonstration purposes but they are better at the rear.
Here is the north end of a magnet. Imagine it is now the anode and we'll change our magnet force fields into anode force fields. The dissolved metal from the anode is transferred along the force fields towards the object being plated. When an object is placed into the force, it affects the lines of force. Non-metallic things such as plastic will divert the force's field. Metallic objects attract lines of force. Here a copper anode is plating a metal part. Notice how the lines of force are attracted to the corners and how this concentration of force has produced more plating in these areas. Here a copper cup is being plated with nickel. Only the rim and the bottom of the inside of the cup actually attract plating. The lines of force are mostly attracted to the rim being the nearest part. Note the thin and weak layer of plating at the bottom of the cup. The lines of force are attracted to the larger surface facing the anodes, so the sides of the part only receive a thin plate. More lines of force are focused on the sides by placing additional anodes. To plate the inside of a cylinder, the anode must be placed equidistantly from the cylinder wall. We've seen how the lines of force from an anode will concentrate on the nearest part of the object being plated. Now we will use an anode shaped to the same profile as the part to ensure the lines of force are all equally distanced from the part. These heaters are preset to 110 degrees. The black bulb on the wire is the thermostat, which must be placed in the solution. The rubber suckers can sometimes be difficult to use, and we prefer to use a hook made of plastic coated wire. If you completely immerse the heater, you should take off the cap and place a good quantity of silicon rubber on the end of the heater. Replace the cap and wipe off the excess. This is the submersible filter pump. It's used in all plating tanks except the chrome tank. There are components here that are not required. There are two outlet caps. One has two outlets, the other just one. We need the one with one outlet. The thin length of tubing can also be discarded. The filter can be changed for a bag of activated charcoal when an organic cleanup is required. See the manual for details. The pumps come already assembled. All components are snap and click assembly. Make sure you remove the pump from the solution every day. The pump does three jobs. Filters the solution, keeps the solution temperature even and agitates the part. To conserve space you can remove the filter from the pump and just use the pump for agitation. You need to direct the pump outlet towards the workpiece. This will agitate the part and remove hydrogen bubbles that form during plating. If these bubbles aren't removed, fish eyes or pinholes may form in the plated surface because the plating forms around the bubble. There's a small plastic cap which must be placed over the nipple in the outlet tube. The SP degreaser uses a 300 watt ceramic heater which will bring the solution to a virtual boil. Add the SP degreaser powder at the approximate rate of one pound per two gallons of solution. Add the distilled water and the setup is ready to operate. SP degreaser is a soak only system. No power is normally required. from time to time use all four different pickles so extra tanks may be in order. These pickles are made from three basic acids muriatic or hydrochloric acid, pickle number four powder and battery acid. Pickle number one is a weak mix of water and muriatic acid usually used to mildly etch where bonding is a problem. Can also be used to strip chrome plate. Pickle number two is a more concentrated version of pickle number one usually used for rust removal. 
Pickle number three is a mixture of battery acid and distilled water. You can also add two ounces of glycerin per gallon of solution. This prevents deep etching. This is often used for stripping and etching a nickel plate. Pickle number four is made of pickle number four powder and distilled water. This can be used to activate steel, remove rust, deoxidize copper and its alloys, and deoxidize zinc and die cast pot metal. It is also ideal for lead and lead based solder. Please consult the manual for more precise details on the use of pickles. There are three techniques for using pickles dipping, soaking, and electro stripping. Here is the tank bar connected to positive. The GP plates are connected to negative. When stripping chrome and nickel, use a higher voltage than when plating. Flash copper is supplied in liquid form. Add four quarts of part A, one quart of part B, and one quart of part C and an equal amount of distilled water. Flash copper bonds to zinc and pot metal, steel, pewter, lead and brass. It can also bond to aluminum after the use of zinc aid as a primer. Flash copper uses the same type of anode as the acid system and it's advisable not to interchange these anodes. The tank operates with a heater and filter pump.